Well, yippee! <laughs> Welcome to a special episode of Ghost Scene Investigations. Our ghost hunters are here at the Kingston Weatherby Hotel, where the ghost of Elias Kingston has been terrifying guests and staff. Tonight, our team will test their mystery-solving skills with another group of ghost debunkers. You've read about them in the news, these teen sleuth sensations, Mystery Inc. And here they are. Fred Jones, Velma Dinkley, Daphne Blake, and Norville Rogers. Like everyone calls me Shaggy. Meet our team of investigators, Dr. Scott O'Mulligan, Professor Lorelai Lee, Monty Casewell, and of course their cybernetic mobile crime fighting forensics unit, Cat Scan. Wow. Wow. We're big fans of your work. That episode where you used carbon-14 dating to determine that the forgery was actually authentic was genius. We just called it brilliant, but we're modest. Rory! Blinky, what happened? There's a dog back here. All right, cut! Their dog tripped the cameraman. There you are, Scoob. He's with us. Scooby helps us solve mysteries. A talking mystery-solving dog. Could be a TV series. Okay, you guys know what to do. Interview the suspects, investigate the scene, track down the ghost, right? Simple? Uh-huh. Uh-uh. We're on it, Mr. Middlemost. Let's get this mystery solved. Then stay out of our way so we could do our thing. We don't want your slipshod methods and shenanigans interfering with our serious investigation. Like what's a shenanigan? I'll take one with mustard and chocolate sauce. Dude, I'll totally send you a dictionary when this is finished. And so the teams of GSI and Mystery Inc. are off. This is going to be great TV. Jeepers. The GSI team doesn't seem very happy that we're here. Don't worry, gang. Once we start working together, we'll all get along. Come on, we've got a mystery to solve. I'm Maggie Sinclair, the manager here at the hotel. Anything I can do to help, please just let me know. It's hard to believe this hotel is still open. I mean, where are the guests? The ghost has scared them all away. You're also in violation of practically every California health and building code. No offense, Miss Sinclair, but your hotel is falling apart. Oh, I know. But how can we fix it up with no money? Take care of the ghost, and that'll take care of business. Achoo! Hanging around this dusty old place all day long must be bad for your sinuses. Ugh, it's not the dust. It's the goldenrod in the garden. I keep telling Earl, our groundskeeper, to pull it, but he never listens. Achoo! You can go anywhere you want in the hotel, but be careful. The ghost of Elias Kingston is in there, somewhere.
Earl, I've discovered that you've been the groundskeeper here for 30 years, back before this place was a hotel. Yep. Man, we've sure known our share of groundskeepers. They usually need watching. And I've also discovered that you were adamantly against the estate being sold to the hotel management company. Yep. Why were you... Excuse me. This is my suspect I'm interrogating right now. Do you mind? No luck solving the mystery so far? Well, I can't say I'm surprised. Mind me, I'm just passing through. Actually, you're not. GSI have done our research, so I know who you are. Stuart Weatherby, heir to the Weatherby fortune. What fortune? The mansion was sold to the hotel company. All the money is gone. The only thing I have left is my uncle's old gold watch. If my research is correct, which it always is, wasn't there some family jewelry? The Weatherby jewels? If they even exist, which I doubt. Like that's something to chew over. Uh, speaking of chewing things over, do you have any more of that gum? Sorry, can't spare it. Don't talk to me. I have enough problems. According to CATSCAN's Infrarouge Thermal Imaging System and the building plans we downloaded from the county records, we know that Stuart Weatherby's room is at the top of this tower. Like, wouldn't it have been easier just to ask him? Okay, gang. Let's go to the top. Uh, we'll just stay here and figure out a trap. I could help you with that. I'm, uh, pretty good with traps. Sorry, man. This trap is pretty complex. Unless you know how to construct a flexible fulcrum that can operate in a state of relative and sustainable torpor. Uh, um... Are we working together or not? Definitely not. While everyone's distracted, Shaggy, you and Scooby can sneak in. <laughs> sneak in? I'll give you a Scooby snack. Well, you better make that, too. Keep going. 
just like this footage. Show's over, Scoob. Zoinks, try to get him near the elevator. Scooby Doo! Chinky Scooby, it's too bad Elias Kingston got away. Did you find any clues in the tower? You know why we volunteered to check out the back of the hotel? That's where we'll find the kitchen. And where there's a kitchen, there's food and lots of it. And I'm starving. Me too. Your turn to sniff things out, Scoob. Let your nose find a triple-decker sandwich. Right. Way to go, Scoob. Let's get that food. Like, let's go check out the fridge. Mmm, <laughs> anchovy spread, pickle relish, fig paste, and cheese. This is gonna be one far out sandwich. Like, was there anything else in the fridge? No, just a ghost. The ghost of Elias Kingston.
and Shaggy always following your stomachs right into trouble. You're lucky you made it out of there in one piece. You didn't happen to find any clues, did you? Nothing like a hotel next to a graveyard, right, Scoob? I guess that's where you can order tomb service. <laughs> like, who's there? Hey, Shaggy. Hey, Scoob. Great timing. Yeah, like time to get out of here. No, there's a phantom carriage in the graveyard. We're going to track it down. Graveyard? Oh, no.
you say there was no one in the phantom carriage? That's creepy. How about clues?
Now, let's see who the ghost of Elias Kingston really is. Earl the Groundskeeper? Oh man, I can't believe you solved it. I was only halfway through with the DNA fingerprinting matrix. How did you know it was him? Earl never wanted the mansion to be a hotel, but there wasn't anything he could do about it, except buy it from the hotel company. The problem was, he didn't have any money. At least, not until he found the famous Weatherby jewels. Right! But even with all those jewels, the hotel was still too expensive. So what do you do when you don't have enough money to buy something? You either get more money, or... Like you make whatever you want to buy cheaper? Right, Shaggy. The longer he scared guests away, the more he brought down the value of the hotel. And pretty soon he'd be able to buy it. He couldn't wait. We even found signs he had painted saying the hotel was closed. It would have worked if it wasn't for you meddling kids. And meddling Scooby-Doo. A ghost? We already solved the mystery of the ghost of Elias Kingston. Like Scooby, another ghost. <laughs> Jeepers, what was that? Darn, missed him again. That wasn't the ghost of Elias Kingston. Does the Kingston Weatherby Hotel have another ghost? It's the Ghost Hunter Haunter. He's been following us around for months. Jinkies! And you have no idea who he is? Like, duh, if we did, we wouldn't call him the Ghost Hunter Haunter, would we? I'd suggest, like, not calling him at all! I just got off the phone with the execs and they want you back! The ratings have doubled! That's great, Mr. Middlemost, but I kind of get the impression we get on GSI's nerves. And catch cans! That's what makes it great TV! Conflict! You have your methods, they have theirs. I don't think keeping at it is such a good idea. Yeah, like thanks for the offer, but we're late for dinner. Ever heard of Sugarland? Sugarland? Yum, yum. Like the candy place where they make toffee whizzes, choco goodies, vanilla chewies, sugo popos, little num nums. <laughs> well, we know they've heard of it. A ghost clown has been haunting the Sugarland candy factory, sabotaging equipment and threatening to close the place down. <laughs> ghost clown? A ghost clown? You could die laughing! A mystery at a candy factory. <laughs> that sounds like a case we could really sink our teeth into. All right, Mr. Middlemost, you've got yourself a deal. Come on, gang.